Morning everyone. For those that uh, watch my videos, you'll... Why do people do that? Why when you've got a car park and there are dozens of spaces everywhere, why does someone have to come and park right next to you? Anyway, maybe they think it's neat filling up the, uh, the gaps as you go. So, morning everyone. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was um, the next decision, the next major decision that I've got to make, which is when I order the Kona um, on the day that it's uh, released, I need to know whether to order the uh, large battery version or the small battery version. So that's what I want to talk about today, the two options for battery size and engine size. But uh, before I do, uh, just a quick update. Um, I finished uh, doing all the building works at home. I finished all the decorating that goes along with it and uh, it's now time to get out and about. I can get out of the house again, which is uh, wonderful. I'm gradually getting rid of this horrible cold that I've had, so I'm feeling a lot better. So today I'm out doing a lot of errands. Um, I'm doing a nice, uh, a nice run out to um, a place called RAF Coltishall. It's an old airfield base that uh, got decommissioned in the 70s or 80s and used to fly uh, Jaguar aircraft. I've got an opportunity to go out to the airfield um, and the um, airfield strip is still available, I can still get the car onto it, so uh, I'm looking forward to having a trip out there and seeing what it's like. Okay, so I've just arrived. Um, I'm very lucky to be here today. This is um, a rare opportunity to get onto an old RAF base. This is RAF Coltishall. It used to be one of the first response fighter bases. You can't get on without security clearance, so it's not a free-for-all. But the uh, amazing thing is, and what I've come to see, is the runway. You can still get and go round the runway. But there are people um, going round. Here we go, so... Let's have a little look. This would be a fantastic place to come and test drive cars. Um, if only we had decent access to it. But, uh, Anyway, so, I haven't come here to show you just RAF Coltishall. Um, I wanted to talk today about uh, battery sizes. That's the next decision for me. Um, the Kona Electric comes in two battery sizes and two motor sizes, engine sizes. Um, one is uh, a 39.2 kilowatt hour battery and the other is a 64 kilowatt hour battery. And those two battery sizes come in different motor sizes. Um, the smaller battery size has 136 kilowatts, sorry, 136 horsepower, and uh, the larger battery size, 64 kilowatt hour, comes with a 200, I think 204 or 207 horsepower motor. So not only have you got to decide what battery size you want, but you also need to decide um, what performance you want because you know it's 136 horsepower for the smaller or um, 204 207 for the larger battery size so it makes a big difference but having said that the motors both deliver 305 395 newton meters of torque so the acceleration from standstill and um, slow speeds is going to be very very similar um, between the two the top end performance, the horsepower, will only affect you really probably from 50 miles an hour upwards to acceleration. So, what, which one would I go for? Now, the temptation is just to say the bigger one, the bigger one, because we all want the biggest battery, you know, because we're used to having issues with um, the batteries and the range anxiety and needing more all the time. So, that's the temptation, just to dive in and get the bigger one straight away. But the reality is, I was test driving the Ionic and the Leaf, and 40 kilowatt hour battery is pretty much enough. You know, the Leaf's range of 150 um, is okay, and in the summer it gets up to 180, which is definitely okay. But in the winter it's not, it's, it goes down a bit. But the Kona, the Kona at the 39.2 kilowatt hour has better efficiency and has probably more kilowatt hours available as usable capacity. So you get nearly 200 miles. So in the summer with economical driving, you probably can expect 200 plus miles out of that. 
as a range. And in the winter, well, with the thermal battery management that it's got, which of course the Leaf doesn't, um, it, uh, it heats the battery up um, as well as cools it in the summer. So, it's, the temptation is just to go for the bigger battery anyway, um, because it's very useful to have a big battery. Um, but the reality is I don't actually need it. So my heart says get the bigger battery, my head says get the smaller one, because that's being sensible. So if we presume there's a £5,000 difference between the two, um, which there might be, we don't know yet in the UK, then we don't even know if the UK is going to get the smaller battery. They keep releasing it in country, saying it's um, the larger battery size only. So let's presume it's a 5,000 difference. Which one would you go for and why? So a 5,000 pound difference between a 39.2 kilowatt hour battery and the 64 kilowatt hour battery. The range difference is um, 300 mile plus in the Um, this is the main runway, all the way down there, absolutely lovely, yeah that would be nice to take the car flight out down there, which I have, um, I have done once before, and the, um, the runway lights are pretty raised up and pretty bumpy. Anyway, um, which, which would you go for and why? Is it the performance, is it the battery size and the range, the range being 200 miles in the summer or 300 plus miles for the larger one? Which would you go for? Um, one of the things that I've thought about um, is if, since I'm buying the car myself and I want to look after the battery and protect it, I'm going to charge um, between 20% and 80% and not charge it all the way to 100% and not discharge it all the way to zero to try and protect the battery, then that gives me only 60% of the battery capacity. So if I was in the 40 kilowatt hour, let's call it 40 kilowatt hour battery size, the Kona, then 60% of that is only 24. So my actual range that I'm gonna use is only based on 24 kilowatt hours, which isn't a lot at all. So the rest would be contingency. So on long trips I charge it to 100% and when I needed it I could drop below the 20% but mostly charge in between. So would that give me you know, the equivalent of range anxiety? Will I uh, get used to the idea of um, having less range? Because if I went for the bigger battery, the 64 kilowatt hour, then six times that uh, for the 60%, 6 times uh, 6.4 time is uh, 36, 37, 38 kilowatt hours. So even if I charged the car between the range of 20% and 80%, I would still get the equivalent of a 40 kilowatt hour battery in what I was using in the drivable range, still protecting the battery, plus the extra contingency of that 20% at the end, plus the extra 20% range if I wanted to charge up and go on a long trip. But, partly that sort of proves the argument, doesn't it? If I'm going to charge between 20 and 80% and therefore only have uh, under 40 kilowatt hours uh, available to me, why don't I just get the smaller battery? So, food for thought. Um, I really would appreciate your feedback, your comments. If you are thinking of buying a Kona, or are buying a Kona, or just uh, hypothetically, what would you buy and why? Why would you justify the extra, let's say, £5,000 um, to have the larger battery? And uh, what do you think of those arguments that I've uh, been mentioning? So there we are. Um, the two engine sizes, the two battery sizes. 39.2 kilowatt hours versus 64 kilowatt hours. A range of around 200 miles for the smaller one, 300 miles plus for the bigger one. That's roughly where we are. Um, I've got no indication that there are any spec levels between the car, because for me that would be the big decider. If the bigger battery size came with more technology and more options and a better level of trim, then that would convince me automatically to go for the bigger battery. But there's no indication at the moment that in the UK there are going to be multiple models coming out and the larger battery comes with better features. We really can't find anything else uh, at all. So there you go, that's, uh, that's what I want to talk to you today about. Anyway, please leave your comments below. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to do these videos, uh, and if you like them, uh, please let me know. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. 
Um, I'm planning next to release a video on the features I've found of what's coming to the Kona in the UK. I've got quite a lot of pictures that I've analysed, quite a lot of information I've found that should be um, a good summary, a good summary of what to expect from the car. So hopefully there'll be some things in there that um, surprise you, that you hadn't seen or noticed before. But equally, it should be a one-stop shop as a video for what to expect from the Kona. Thank you very much for watching again. See you again soon. Bye.